Alia's latest update was accompanied by an AMA, which I unfortunately was unable to attend. However, many interesting questions were asked and answered, so I picked 14 of the most interesting or informative ones. Is there going to be a way for us to expand building structure limits? Yes, we're looking to increase the amount that players will be able to place as we update features throughout our beta. It's currently being looked into, but we don't have a date for this yet. Why is there a gold cap and why is it 300k? For a live service game that we want to last for years on end, we felt it was important to maintain the value of our currencies over time. The gold cap is one method of keeping the overall economy in range. When we set the current gold amount, we base it on earlier alpha tests, engagement, and earning rates. What we've seen since beta launch is how much both the median player and higher earning players are actually gaining. Players are playing both longer and earning more gold than we anticipated with the 300k limit. This will be something that we continue to evaluate and make changes to. We'll be going a lot more in depth on our economic thoughts in a future dev update. Why is there a limit of only 9 plots for any player? What's the reasoning behind this decision despite the fact that large scale farming is one of the popular aspects of this genre? Ultimately, the limits on gardening are in place for the same reason we have limits on gold income across the game widely. In single player community sim games, it's a common player progression arc that by the end of the game you've completely trivialized the core currency. As a live game, we believe we need to maintain the value of our core currencies over time, so we have set up our gold generation ecosystem to have limits. That being said, we think there are some issues with the current execution of gardening. Players have limited expression freedom with their gardens when they have to place them in a 3x3 block and want to benefit from adjacent crop buffs. Also, the ability to really chase the fantasy of being a large-scale farmer. We also know a lot of players are talking about how gardens only progress a single level while offline. This is a major economic consideration that would require major shifts to address, but we are looking into how we could best address this feedback. From what we're seeing, addressing these issues would require a significant amount of work we could do, but it would not be anything we would be able to address soon. In the latest update, you nerfed the viability of making tomato seeds for the sake of making profit. Do you have plans to change other high profit hacks, such as celebration cake parties? In general, our guiding principle is to allow you to play the game you want to play. We want players to feel like they have a reasonable path to earning gold and unlocking parts of the game by engaging in activities they enjoy. When we see one activity start to notably be better than others, it creates a pressure on a lot of players to start doing that activity or they will feel like they're being left behind. Cake parties on the other hand are awesome and an activity we very much want to preserve, but they are generating too much income right now. We intentionally designed cooking around being a multiplayer activity and wanted to encourage players to play in ways like this. Given the high cost to organize a cake party, we think it's okay for this one to be one of the best, if not the best value generating activity in the game. We're discussing options to bring the income earned down while preserving the overall benefit of this activity and we'll share when we have a path forward. Long term, the better solution is adding more dishes of this complexity to ensure players aren't just making celebration cakes at these parties, but other dishes and multiplayer activities as well. How do you reconcile Cozy with NURPS? That part is really confusing to me. What makes it more confusing is the festival prizes being outrageously priced. This is a fair point, and the cross-section of Cozy and nerfing is something we're seeing more as we've gone into beta. Our goal with balance changes to date have been primarily to address the large outliers. This unfortunately comes with players feeling like their way of play is no longer viable. At the same time, we see some players feel like they have to participate in certain activities, even if they don't like them. One option might be to only buff everything that isn't keeping up, the downside of that approach is a never-ending inflation for all activities in the game. Doing so will mean we have to price future in-game content even higher. In regards to the festival prize pricing, it's important to us that all players can have a good experience engaging with Maji Market. We want all players to walk away with a wide variety of new items from each event. However, we also want to support players that are engaging at the highest thresholds with the game, earning many times the amount of gold per week than most players. For those players, we've included a few chase items that we anticipate would be out of reach for many players. However, something we've been clear about is that this event and these items will return. Even if you might not be able to obtain some things from the Magi Market this first time around, it won't be the last you see of these items. Of course, this is our very first event. We expect to learn a lot from this experience, so expect our approach to evolve as new events are released in the future. As a colorblind gamer, I was ecstatic that your character creation had something I almost never see. When choosing a hair color, there were tooltips on mouse over that told me what color it was. However, I was gutted when I moved on to other color choices and those tooltips were gone. Can you please add your color tooltips to all color choices? Yup, we can fix that. It was an oversight on our part. In general, adding colorblind mode is on the roadmap for our accessibility options. 
But as I mentioned in another response, we want to make sure that it's done correctly and tested enough. So I don't have an exact date on this, but we know we haven't done a good enough job on accessibility as of yet. Will the map be updated with a grid system for more efficient node callouts? Yes, a system like this is something we're looking into and hope to have in the near future. Currently, the game is sparse with things that actually reward cooperation. Things like Palliamore and Flow Trees often lead to strife and competitiveness. Can you expand on upcoming co-op features for Pallia? Things like just sitting in the inn with your friends and playing a card game would add so much to Pallia. Areas in which gathering experiences are leading to strife we generally consider to not be meeting our goals for a collaborative multiplayer experience, so expect us to continue to iterate and try new things in these spaces. In terms of additional co-op features, some of the things we're able to speak of at this time include being able to more closely share a plot with a friend, activities you can complete with your community, and we're assessing additions to many of our skills that will reward or require co-op to participate. We've recently announced that we're working on a variety of decor interactivity options, including sitting in chairs, which will unlock unlock the first part of your cozy and fantasy. Family board game nights are also super cozy to so many people around the world, so we're fans of your line of thinking here. Will communities serve a bigger or better purpose in the near future? Support for communities will come in phases over the next several months. They do mostly serve as chat rooms at this time. Our recent blog posts highlighted a couple of the first things you can expect to see in this area. Activities to complete together, community progression, rewards for doing things with and for your community. Later on, we've said we're excited about giving communities a place of their own, and they will play a big role in how players engage with the evolving world story. What are your current plans for sharing space with friends or communities? As it was mentioned by our game director, moving towards more community features and MMO systems is a large priority for our team, so I can't say for sure when or how. That said, it is a goal for us to expand the features of housing space, so we're planning on enabling core systems for edit access, as well as allowing players to have multiple homes on one plot. Will romanceable NPCs serve more of a purpose in the future? We will likely not offer gameplay perks or bonuses for romance, because we feel like players should engage in romance because they like a character, not because they're trying to get a bonus. That being said, we are planning on adding additional romance levels that would include new content and features. A marriage or move-in state is being discussed as part of those plans. Will we be able to change the full names and nicknames of our characters? We have plans to allow players to be able to change their own names on a reasonable cadence. It will be a very basic functionality at first, so that we can get it into players' hands. But we will find time in the future to improve the quality of life of that feature. I've had more than one person tell me they believe customization options like beards will be locked into the premium store. Facial hair options as well as various hairstyles, eyewear, and more can be considered core attributes of a person's look, and not a flashy cosmetic bonus. Are you willing to commit to saying now that facial hair will be a free customization option? And additionally, will you commit to making more hairstyles and glasses available in the free wardrobe? We completely agree with you, and are absolutely committed to making free facial hair options as well as additional free hairstyles and eyewear. We do think that there are instances where some of those customizations can be flashy cosmetic bonuses, and it's totally okay for both of those spaces to coexist. The bar we aim to uphold is that the core identity customization and representation are always free. Think body types, skin tones, and some eyewear, while cosmetic expressions sit more in the paid category. What's the planned feature that you're most excited for? I'm excited about how we're planning to do multiplayer story slash questing. I can't get into the details right now, but we're planning on doing some stuff that's really unique that I think players will love. I'm excited about pushing the story forward. It's some of my favorite content in our game, plus new locations for players to explore. I might be biased because I work on it, but still, new areas are my favorite. I love exploring and foraging, so I'm super excited for new zones to discover with friends. Really looking forward to new sites to see and gatherables to hoard. I'm personally very excited for one of our upcoming NPCs. I can't say much more, but they're filling a need I feel as a player in Palia, and everything about them is awesome. Redacted, a community feature that allows you to redacted with redacted. It's gonna be awesome. I always joked how sit tech is too powerful to be added to our testers, but we just added a sit emote. Super stoked to see where we go from here. That concludes all the questions I picked out. There were quite a few others, um, which you can, as always, check for yourself down in the description. I'm most excited for new zones. I love me some secrets. And who knows, maybe those new zones will bring new challenging uh, fauna to, to hunt for, or maybe even some combat aspects, which they have mentioned before they're planning on. So let me know in the comments below what you're most excited for. I will see you guys in the next video or around in Palia, as always.